I sat myself down by the side of a grove And there I did hear the sweet nightingale sing You never heard so sweet You never heard so sweet You never heard so sweet as the birds in the spring In this very town, just on that hill over there, a young girl with a lazy left eye lived with her mother, father and two older brothers. When she was seven years old, the year a great hurricane hit this town, Left Eye's mother sat her down in the bathroom and she told her that she had found a lump in her breast. It's an illness called cancer, she said, and she let Left Eye come and feel it. But we've caught it early, she said. And Left Eye resolved that from that moment, she would be good and that she would make her mother well. And Left Eye grew into a tall girl and she learnt to cook. And she cooked and cooked to make her mother well. Left Eye's father was an inventor and one day he became quite rich and the family moved away from the seaside into a large house with many stairs. Left Eye's brother met a girlfriend and she came to live with them. Left Eye did not get on well with her. The girlfriend was many things that Left Eye was not. And the girlfriend would express a great rage by screaming and running along the corridors and slamming the door. And the girlfriend had a sister who would often come and visit and they would lie together on the sofa for hours chatting in their mother tongue while Left Eye cooked and cooked to make her mother well. Now, Left Eye's mother knew something about the girlfriend that she did not, for the girlfriend had been rejected by her own mother in a faraway country at a very tender age. And Left Eye's mother grew to care very much for her son's girlfriend, who became her daughter-in-law. And the daughter-in-law grew to love her mother-in-law very much indeed. And Left Eye grew and her food became more rich and delicious. And she started to grow hips and breasts. And she started to find that being good became very difficult indeed. And Left Eye's mother grew distant and critical. And Left Eye started to hide things from her, her joy, her passions, her longing. And the mother, hid from the daughter that she was dying. As soon as she came of age, Left Eye followed a long cherished dream she had and she flew far away to the tropical rainforests of the Amazon. She was thrilled by the beauty of the wild animals that she saw there. She saw pink river dolphins and tarantulas and scarlet macaws and she saw the toucan. And at night she saw fireflies and she heard the rich liquid sound of the rainforest. And she found herself in many lonely bedrooms with men she barely knew. Men who smelt her naivety and who gave her the white powder from the coca leaf to take away her inhibitions. Just as she was coming back from the deepest part of the jungle, Left Eye received a message that said, come home now. And with a creeping dread of just how very far away from good she had been, Left Eye landed back home and three days later, her mother died. Left Eye had not saved her. And with a heart frozen, she watched as her sister-in-law draped in black, tended to the flowers in her mother's garden. 
just three weeks later, left I packed her bags and moved far north to, to study in a city, a city full of poets with a castle on a hill. And she was really excited to meet new friends and forget about what had just happened. But not long after she arrived, she received a phone call from her father. He had met a new wife and she had a daughter who was the same age as Left Eye. Her father was giddy with new love and every time he spoke to Left Eye on the telephone, he would tell her something of how wonderful and talented his new wife's daughter was. And Left Eye resolved that she would make this new mother love her. And for a while, Left Eye's plan seemed to be working. The stepmother was warm and welcoming, and whenever Left Eye went to visit, she would cook the most delicious food. But one day, it changed. Left Eye's father and stepmother threw a great family party to celebrate the engagement of the younger brother. Left Eye had spent hours cooking huge, delicious sweet onion tarts. But after the party, the stepmother heard a whisper of disapproval from somebody in the family. Nobody knows who it was, but someone said something that went straight to the cracks in her heart. For the stepmother had known the cruelest separation from her own mother at a very tender age. The stepmother had known an oppression so cruel that the shame of it lay heavy on them all. And Left Eye was the first to be accused. Left Eye's father shouted insults with a blazing fury at Left Eye, accusing her of things that she knew she had never said. And from that moment onwards, the stepmother would find insult in every look and every word. And every member of the family was accused of insulting her. And at the insult of being accused of an insult, the family visited no more. Left Eye did not completely give up on the stepmother, but hedging her bets, she decided to look for another mother. Left Eye met a handsome, charming and very clever man whose mother was loving and warm and generous. Left Eye adored her and she cooked the most delicious food whenever Left Eye went to stay. Left Eye married this man and she set about being the most perfect wife and daughter she could possibly be. For seven years, Left Eye read nothing but her husband's favourite books. And for seven years, Left Eye learnt to draw and paint pictures in a way that would please her husband and mother-in-law. And for seven years, Left Eye wore nothing but clothing that her husband liked to see her in. Left Eye believed every word her husband said until one day she completely forgot that she had any words of her own. Her husband would say things like, you're not hungry, you don't want to eat, when Left Eye knew that she was hungry and she did want to eat. And this hunger made Left Eye angry and this anger made her husband cruel. So Left Eye spent many lonely hours walking by herself. And one day, Left Eye was walking along the river when she saw the flash of a kingfisher, flash, and she followed, flash, and followed, flash, until she came to an enormous pink hawthorn tree and the tree sang to her a low buzzing song of ancient summers. And Left Eye's vision started to go strange. She started to see turquoise and deep pink everywhere she looked. And she heard the whispers of the other motherless daughters. And they said, no one tells us what to do anymore. And Left Eye walked further and further into this green landscape. And there she met a man who lived in a wood 
where the trees had faces and dragons flew in the canopy. And this man had enormous hands and an enormous smile. And he said to Left Eye, if you come with me, I will show you a love like you have never known. And Left Eye packed her bag secretly while her husband was at work. And she ran off to be with this man who gave her so much pleasure. Her body ached and her mind blew like falling may blossoms. And after about a week or so of ecstasy, she woke with a terror. She was all alone with a man who she wasn't even sure was of this world. She had to get away. She had to get away from his spell. So she packed her bags and she decided she would go and visit her father's house once more. But when she got there, she saw blood and smashed glass everywhere. There had been a huge argument. There was a smashed photograph of her mother on the floor and she picked it up and put it in her bag. Her father had blood dripping from his forehead and he, trying to laugh, saying, really, it's nothing serious. Left eye scrubbed the blood off the floor. Her stepmother had been taken to hospital so Left Eye went to visit her. And she said thank you to Left Eye for visiting. But when her own daughter arrived, she gave Left Eye a smile which seemed to say, off you go now. Looking for somewhere safe, Left Eye packed her bags again and she decided she would go and visit her brother. He was living far across the ocean in the island with a hummingbird and the scarlet ibis. Left Eye travelled far across the ocean and she cooked delicious cakes for her niece and nephew and she saw the toucan again in silhouette. But her brother was more distant than ever, even angry with her. And just as she was leaving, he told her of the bitter secrets of his childhood, of the things that could never be spoken of of the shame that lay heavy on them all. And with a heaviness in her heart, Left Eye travelled back to England. And she moved into a small room on the edge of a field in Sussex. And in her sleep, old dreams came back to visit. And sometimes in the day, her thoughts were so frightening that they raced across the downs to Beachy Head. And she wondered, what would it be like to just leap. And just at that moment, the song of a nightingale burst through the hedgerow, the rich liquid sound of the rainforest. And Left Eye followed and followed until she was so close she could see the bird in the thorny bush. And the song was so loud it ripped through time. It was a song of deception and grief of mocking and longing, a song of joy and passion and the beauty that awaited her. The very next day, Left Eye phoned up her godmother in Brighton, an old friend of her mother's. Darling, come to Brighton right away, she said, and Left Eye packed her bags and she did. And in that town, Left Eye started to speak and as she started to speak of the things that could never be spoken of, she started to feel. And as she started to feel, she discovered that the things that she thought she had left behind, the joy, the passions, were still there. And years later, somewhere on the downs, Left Eye told her story. And up on the downs in the evening sun, Left Eye felt her mother close by, walking with her hair blowing in the wind.
Mm, all on the cold ground I sat myself down And the sound of the nightingales echoed around The song was so charming, the notes were so clear no music, no songster, no music, no songster, no music, no songster could ever compare. Come all that are here, these birds for to hear. I pray you pay attention and quickly draw near And when you are old you will have this to sing You never heard so sweet You never heard so sweet You never heard so sweet as the birds in the spring